Today we're going to talk about a uh, show from 1986 that uh, has a huge fan base. It's another one of those obscure shows that, uh, for whatever reason, just didn't get a lot of press when it was originally out, but has since developed a fiercely devoted fan base and um, is really well regarded by animation and science fiction fans together. I'm, of course, speaking of... Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. This is volume one of a two-volume set comprising all 65 episodes of the entire series. And uh, I don't actually have volume one, or sorry, <laughs> I don't have the one I'm holding in my hand. I don't actually have volume two yet, so we're just going to talk about volume one today. Uh, today, <laughs> on the Multimedia Chronicles. Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. Now, to describe this show to people who have never seen it before, it sounds ridiculous. Like, it sounds like something that could never possibly be good in any conceivable way. But damn! Damn! This is a good show. And anybody who tells you different doesn't know what they're talking about. Seriously. Um, like any show, it has its stinker episodes, and chances are, I've talked to some people on my stick camera who said, Galaxy Rangers, that show sucked. Oh, it was so bad. I suspect the reason they feel that way is because they tuned in randomly one day and just happened to see one of a handful of stinker episodes. There were 65 episodes total, and of that, I would say two, maybe three episodes are way below par. Overall, the other 62 or 63 episodes are some of the finest animated science fiction you're ever going to see. Now, I was going to attempt to describe what it's like, and the description would go something like this. It's a uh, space western about cops in space. They ride robotic horses and have bionic powers. That sounds cheesy as hell. So rather than try to describe it, I'm going to give you a look at the opening title sequence, as I always try to do in these reviews, and let that speak for itself, and you can see for yourself just how awesome this show is. Um, the music is a little bit dated, but the music is part of the charm of this show. It's definitely got an 80s rock flavor to it, and uh, man, after you watch a few episodes, you find yourself humming the theme song and singing along with it as you watch. So without any further ado, here's the opening titles from The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. Check it out. In 2086, two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth, seeking our help. In return, they gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. We have assembled a team of unique individuals to protect Earth and our allies, courageous pioneers committed to the highest ideals of justice and dedicated to preserving law and order across the new frontier. These are the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. Pretty cool stuff, eh? Um, yeah, as with most 80s cartoons, the I mean, the animation in the opening title sequence is just spectacular, and uh, that was kind of a trend. They tended to put all their best efforts into the title sequence, and then, uh, you know, the shows themselves tended to be not quite as spectacular, but uh, Galaxy Rangers, they actually did a pretty good job of keeping the show pretty much on par with the uh, animation quality of the, uh, the opening titles, which is quite nice. So it's definitely above average animation. Um, a lot of people describe this as the first American anime, meaning that uh, all the animation was actually done by a Japanese animation studio, and um, it definitely has an anime flavor to it. Um, also, there's quite a tight continuity to the series, and um, that's also kind of an anime thing that you didn't see very much in the, uh, in the 80s. So it definitely benefits from watching the episodes in order. 
this is the first time that the complete series has been available in Region 1 with all the episodes available in their, in their intended order. So this has all the story continuity intact. They weren't always broadcast in the right order, so this actually could be the very first time ever that the series has been available in the correct order. Um, and it definitely benefits from that, and there's somebody knocking at my window. I'll be right back. I was going to talk a little bit about uh, previous video releases. There was, um, there was a few over the years. There was never a proper complete series release, at least not on our side of the pond here. Um, there was a complete uh, DVD, uh, a complete series uh, release on DVD in Germany uh, a few years back, which um, a lot of fans actually really liked because they could at least get the complete series and it had an alternate audio track that had the original English audio and uh, all the text was in English and everything. It was just uh, they had the German audio for the German viewers. So that was pretty cool. So at least. Uh, at least it was available in some form. So if you had a multi-region player that could play the uh, you know region two discs and also decode PAL video um, to NTSC, you could still uh, get the series. But of course, you'd have to get it as an import, which would be prohibitively expensive. So it's really nice to have the region one complete series release finally. Um, there were some other region one DVD releases a few years back. There was just single disc releases. Uh, there was four volumes. Each had four episodes on it. I had all four of those, um, but you know, as with most single disc releases, it was just random episodes. There wasn't really any rhyme or reason to them at all. And with such a continuity-heavy series as Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, you really want them in the correct order. So it's nice that they finally did that. The very first video releases were actually back when the show was still fairly new. There was um, quite a collection of VHS releases. They had something like 54 episodes of the 65 put out on VHS, but once again in completely random order. I had a few volumes of that. There was some that I got uh, at a local store when they were new, and then I got a few more off eBay. But getting those old VHS tapes off eBay was usually quite an endeavor because all the fans would be fiercely competing in the auctions for them, and especially volumes that had key episodes from the series, and you'd be really fighting tooth and nail just to, to get your hands on it. So. Uh, let's take a look at the actual packaging because there's um, quite a lot of goodies in here for I mean it's a fairly small package it's about the size of one and a half uh, standard DVD cases um, but there's quite a lot of stuff in here and I wanted to give you a look at it so let's take a look all right adventures of the galaxy rangers the collection volume one now this is kind of interesting because it actually slides out from the bottom you can see that the, the, the space for the logo is just a cutout, and the logo is actually printed on the interior. So inside, uh, it gives you the logo, and then it gives you the, uh, the opening narration, which you can read there. 2086, two peaceful aliens, journey to Earth, blah, 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 blah. And then on the back here, we have just uh, your standard description of uh, the show, and bonus features. Quite a lot of bonus features on here. There's a couple of commentaries and uh, an on-camera interview with series creator Robert Mandel and um, there's also uh, one particular feature that, that uh, I and I think a lot of other fans are really delighted about. You can get, uh, they have four tracks of the original music from the show. So you can actually, one of the big things that fans have always loved about Galaxy Rangers is the music and uh, so it's nice to be able to finally have some of the music in, a, in its original form. Now this here is the original logo that they came up with for the show, which was abandoned, and instead uh, this much slicker one was used instead. But they include that here for uh, completion's sake. Now before we get right into the digipack, let's take a look at the back, which actually features a little wraparound uh, artwork of uh, most of the primary characters, which is quite nice. So this, of course, is the two uh, aliens, and then the, uh, the Galaxy Rangers themselves. So, quite nice. So inside, uh, the whole series comes on four discs. And once again, like most sets of this type, you, uh, you take the uh, little thumb marks here for you to take the discs out. You basically get a, a nice sort of background uh, painting type of uh, picture. So that's very nice. 
take a look at the other the other side of that. There we go. So that's uh, I believe that's Beta, the Bureau of Extraterrestrial Affairs. So quite nice. So then uh, inside, we actually have quite uh, an extensive booklet. I also have another uh, just pamphlet of other releases from Koch Entertainment. Set that aside. So quite a nice booklet. Uh, really a lot of information in here. So they give you a quick breakdown of what's on each disc, which episodes, and uh, where the extra features are. All the bonus features are actually on the first uh, disc, which is kind of nice, having it all in one place. Um, and there's a few commentaries on here, actually, which uh, I actually haven't listened to all the commentaries. I listened to the first two, I think. There was one for New Frontier, which is the second episode, and One Million Emotions. I noticed the commentaries rip on Thundercats a lot. I never really understood quite why. Maybe I'll talk about that a little bit more in uh, when I do a Thundercats review. But uh, looking inside the book here, it's quite extensive. There's uh, 32 pages, thereabouts. So once again, we see the original logo, table of contents, and then uh, a map just sort of of the, the territories in the universe basically of the Queen's Empire and the areas that are controlled by the Galaxy Rangers and uh, stuff like that. Get a brief uh, summary of everything by uh, series creator Robert Mandel, which is nice. And then we get character profiles. So here's Zachary Fox uh, and his family. Shane Gooseman, who is uh, also known as the Goose, who's sort of the resident uh, Clint Eastwood character. Very Clint Eastwood-like. Um, as you can see, just, I mean, Come on, that's Clint Eastwood, right there. <laughs> uh, Nico, who's the, the psychic, of course. And uh, Walter Hartford. Walter Doc Hartford, but everybody just calls him Doc. And you got Q-Ball, who's basically the gadget uh, guy. Buzz Wang. Stop laughing. I know it's a funny name. Anyway, he's a robot. Uh, Dr. Owen Nagata, who's basically just a lump of green goo in a floating thing that's... You know, crazily intelligent. Sort of like, this is what Stephen Hawking would be in the future. There you go. Uh, Joseph Walsh, Commander, who's basically the Commander, as his name implies. <laughs> the Commander is the Commander. Did you know that? That the Commander's the Commander? He commands, because he's the Commander. Then you got Waldo and Zozo, who are the two uh, aliens. It gives you a lot of... Uh, as you can see, there's like just a ton of background information about all the characters here. They put a lot into the background uh, of the whole world that it's set in. And that's one of the things that makes it so great, is just the, the level of detail. Uh, so here we have Captain Kidd and Squeegee. Squeegee's basically like his sort of... Uh, uh, Captain Kidd is essentially a space pirate, and Squeegee is essentially like his parrot, except he's not a parrot. He's some kind of weird monkey thing. Um, <coughs> you got Maya, the Queen of the Crown, who's uh, one of the primary villains. Uh, slaver lords who work for the queen, crown agents who are basically like her stormtroopers, Lazarus Slade who's uh, a super trooper reject much like uh, uh, Shane Gooseman, but you have to watch the series to find out the deal there. Uh, Mogul, Scarecrow, Scarecrow is is just scary as hell and if I was a little kid and saw Scarecrow I would be very scared. No relation to the Scarecrow from Batman of course. And then you just sort of got some general information about the different uh, locations, recurring locations. And uh, there you go. So, and this is just Volume 1. Volume 2, my understanding, is comes with even more information. So, there you go. I definitely got to pick up Volume 2. Oh, you probably noticed, like, inside, there's, uh, there's more artwork inside. If you want to sort of poke around in there a bit. <laughs> Careful not to damage the flap, of course. So yeah, it's uh, it's a great set, and uh, you know any '80s cartoon fan worth his salt is not going to be disappointed because this is uh, this is a series that they put a lot more effort into than the average show from that era, and this is an absolutely beautiful set. So there you go, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool packaging. I'm sure you'll agree. Um, and as far as I'm aware, the second volume uh, follows suit and is very uh, similar in terms of packaging design. 
Um, I don't know specifically what's in there in terms of what's in the book and you know, stuff like that. Uh, I should mention the music tracks. I was talking a little bit about the music tracks. Um, the music is one of the things that fans really love about this series. I mean, you heard, of course, the opening theme song. There was a couple of different closing theme songs. There was a slightly different version of the, the one you heard, and then there was another song that they used uh, partway into the, about a third of the way into the series until the end. Um, <clears throat> so the, the music tracks on the Volume 1 collection, they just have four, four selected music tracks from the soundtrack. So you get to hear the, the full, complete songs uh, in their untruncated form, which is nice, because uh, of course they cut them down slightly for the titles. Um, and then as far as I'm aware, the second volume has the other songs, like another selection of like four, maybe five, I don't know. Uh, anyway, the rest of the, the notable songs on there. So if you're clever, you can actually, you could actually rip the audio and make MP3s for your MP3 player and then have your own little miniature, you know, Galaxy Rangers soundtrack to carry around with you. Not that I did that or anything, but... <laughs> I love the music and I listen to it all the time, so it's uh, it's good stuff. It really grows on you, definitely. Um, now the interesting thing about Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers is a lot of the uh, cartoons uh, that were on in the same era, the, uh, the mid-80s, were primarily cartoons based on toys. Uh, so a lot of them were seen as glorified toy commercials, but when they set out to do Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, they basically just wanted to do a straight up science fiction series, but animated. Um, I think it was, they were big anime fans and said like, hey, why don't we do a U.S. anime, essentially. Uh, spend a lot of time doing, uh, just having really quality stories and interesting characters and uh, lots of stuff like that. Um, so it's great and there's a lot of, the. I highly recommend checking out the interviews and commentaries on these because they really give you a lot of insight into the, uh, you know, what they were going for production-wise. But the long and the short of it is, it was one of the few animated shows on at the time that wasn't based on a toy. Yes, there were some Galaxy Rangers toys, but they came later. They were actually based on the show. So, just as a, you know, cross-promotion kind of thing. But uh, unfortunately, it wasn't popular enough that they weren't able to do a second season, because they did want to do another 65 episode season. But uh, unfortunately, it never came to be, because the first season just wasn't popular enough at the time. Um, they uh, <coughs> so they did the one season, and uh, it wasn't based on toys. It was just a straight up science fiction western, basically. And uh, it honestly has some of the finest writing that I've ever seen in an animated series from that period. Uh, it's definitely way above average. And if you haven't checked it out, check it out. If you, I mean, if you're a science fiction fan, if you're an animation fan, if you're an anime fan. Any of the, any or all of the above, check out Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers because I can almost guarantee you will love it. I say almost because not everything is everybody's cup of tea, right? So anyway, that's it. Check it out. Volume two is available now, so they actually do have both volumes available, and uh, so all 65 episodes in the original intended order, so you can enjoy the complete saga of the Galaxy Rangers as it was intended to be seen. And there's lots of extras. And if you love the music like I do, you can listen to the music as well as uh, one of the extras. So that's pretty much it. Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, the collection. Definitely a worthwhile purchase. And uh, your 80s cartoon library will thank you forever. <laughs> Alrighty, that's it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching. And sayonara.